So over a low heat, a small frying pan, I've got 100, 100 grams of hazelnuts toasting. Now today's recipe is a chocolate biscuit cake. Now that is a no-bake cake. In fact, we're going to use the fridge to actually set it on. So we're just toasting these hazelnuts off. You need to watch hazelnuts because hazelnuts have oil in them and will easily burn. And we don't want burnt hazelnuts. We just want a lightly golden colour. And what we're going to do then, we're going to set this aside and we will cool them off and then we will break them up. Now you can see around the edges here that the hazelnuts are now starting to colour. And this is when we want to start watching them. You don't want to burn them, give them a little toss around, keep them moving until you're happy with the colour on them. There we go. It's starting to colour up nicely here. So I'm going to turn the heat off now, let them finish in the pan. In my cup here, soaking in some rum, just a couple of splashes of rum. I've got some sultanas and a handful of blueberries. I like blueberries. Uh, an alternative would be some glacé cherries, chop them up, um, anything you fancy, put them in here. This is going to be added to my crushed hazelnuts and we're going to stir that into the mixture of the biscuits and the rest of the ingredients I'm going to use to bind everything together. In my bowl here I've got 150 grams of rich tea fingers, which I've just broken up with my fingers and 150 grams of digestive biscuits. These are slightly sweeter than the rich tea. And all I've done there, again, broken up with my fingers. I'm looking for fairly decent sized chunks. If you don't want to use your fingers, put them in a bag, hit them with a rolling pin, put them in a blender, blitz them up on pulse, just for a few seconds. You don't want crumbs, you want decent chunks. You don't want them too big though. Right, this is our toasted hazelnuts cool down now. What I'm going to do, put a plastic bag here, tip everything into the plastic bag. There we go. And all we're going to do is take the rolling pin that we use to break the chocolate up. Just roll everything up until you break the hazelnuts up. Keep them as chunky or as fine as you like. Put this in with our biscuits. Take our raisins and our blueberries we had. Drain them off. Don't want any booze in there. They're all nicely plumped up now. So put them in there. Put that in mix with your hands gently. And what I've got here is about an 8 inch diameter spring form tin. Spring form allows you to get it out, leaving the cake on the bottom, expanding the outside and taking the tin off. And what I've got, I've cut some paper, because I'm going to line the outside of the, uh, of the tin, like that. There's another one for this side. And once that's in there, I'm going to butter everything. And then we're going to press our cake, chocolate biscuit cake mixture, into this. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of cocoa powder into 150 grams of butter into a small saucepan. One, two of cocoa powder. Two tablespoons of milk, full fat milk. One, two, I've got 50 grams of caster sugar, golden caster sugar, and there's a tip here, I'm using a um, golden syrup here as well, I like the mixture of the two, golden syrup is a little bit healthier than the sugar, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the same equivalent of a golden syrup, but to make sure it spreads better, I've actually heated up the bottle, the golden syrup, in some warm water, it allows it to spread better. So 50 grams of caster sugar, 
50 grams of golden syrup is what I'm using. Now all of that is going to go into my butter mix. So that's my butter, my cocoa powder and my milk. I just use a spoon to put the last of the syrup. We're going to get a bar of chocolate. We're going to break that up into pieces. We need 200 grams of chocolate. Use whatever chocolate you fancy. Take your chocolate bar, just put it with a rolling pin so it breaks up into small chunks and add that to your butter mix that we're going to heat over a stove, a low heat and we're going to stir continuously because chocolate when it heats up it's a tendency to burn and we don't want that so we've got to keep it low and we're going to keep it stirring all the time. I don't want the chocolate to burn Every once in a while I'm taking it off the heat. The residual heat in the pan will melt the chocolate and the butter. Chocolate, when it burns, goes very grainy. You do not want that here. If you wanted to, you could add a splash of orange juice here and a zest of an orange, that'd be quite tasty, chocolate orange. This is smoothing out nicely, this is creaming up, excellent. All the butter and all the chocolate is now melted together. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So shake your bottle, that's the one I'm using, vanilla extract from the seeds. Don't use the essence, the essence is crap. So put a little bit in, half a tablespoon, that'll do. Take your chocolate mixture, pour the whole lot into your bowl. And now all we do with our mixture is combine it all together, give it a stir around, make sure it's all coated. Do a folding mixture, get under the mixture. Make sure it's all combined. It may not look like you've done enough mixture for the chocolate, but that's because you need to stir it all well. You keep stirring it, combining everything, everything will come together and stick together nicely. If you don't stir it well, well your cake won't um, stick together very well in your pan when you, when you press it all together. So you keep stirring it and as the chocolate cools it starts to stick together and that's when you know that it's time to put this into your pre-lined cake tin. And all we do is pour in And then all we need to do is just press this down to the outside. Try and keep it even. That obviously helps. You don't want any air gaps here. And then start to smooth it round. There we go. Press it right down. Now I've switched to a palette knife. Now you can use one of these big shaped ones, which I've been doing. I'm just pressing things down like that. I do have one of these, it's smaller. 
and that allows you to smooth things down better. So that's our cake. And what we're going to do now, you know, we're happy it's all sort of pressed down hard. We're going to leave this in the fridge for an hour just to set up. And we can take it out and add a frosting top into it. So I'm going to make a ganache for the top of my chocolate biscuit cake. I'm going to use half of this carton of double cream. This is 300 ml, so I'm going to use 150 milliliters. I'm going to break in my uh, milk chocolate and I'm going to break up my um, white chocolate. I'm going to have a ripple effect hopefully on the top of this when we get started. I'm going to use 150 milliliters of the cream. I'm going to heat that in a saucepan until it comes up to temperature. I'm going to give it a stir and we're going to add in our chocolate, but we're not going to leave the saucepan on the heat. We're going to take that off and pour that into a bowl, break in the chocolate into the bowl, and then we'll stir it in so the chocolate doesn't burn and go gritty. So this is our cream. It's warmed up now. Uh, we're just going to let it cool down slightly and then we'll add our chocolate in. So after a lot of stirring, I've gone back to the whisk. Now this is actually thickening up quite nicely now. The chocolate is all melted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my cake out of the fridge. I'm going to spoon this on the top, level it out, and then we'll let that set in the fridge. Let's get the cake out of the fridge and pour this on. I'm just going to basically tip this into the middle. And then spread it out with a palette knife. Take a spatula. Circular motions from the middle. Spoon chocolate ganache to the outside of the cake just so there's an even coating all over. Just keep turn, turning the cake around as you go using a swirling motion. So there's my cake. I drizzled it with um, the dark chocolate, milk chocolate rather, and then I've melted a little bit of white chocolate just to drizzle on to uh, contrast the uh, colours. So all I'm going to do now is put this straight into the fridge and let it set. One last touch is to spread your cake with some chopped, uh, chopped toasted hazelnuts. So what I'm going to do I'm not going to bother chopping them up, I'm just going to break them up with a rolling pin in a plastic bag. So there's your bag, take a carry bag, plastic bag. Position your nuts on the, on the board. Take a rolling pin and just There's our crushed hazelnuts, toasted hazelnuts. All we need to do now is just sprinkle these over the top of the cake.
So there is our beautiful chocolate biscuit cake. Um, just serve it with some berries. Uh, this is going to be a lovely, um, easy dish to make. Very quick and simple. All it takes is the preparation time and time to set these things in the fridge. And then you're ready to eat these things. So let's give it a little try. Just biting into this. It's very, very rich. You can see the nuts and the fruit we put into the um, into the cake base, the biscuit base. A lovely layer of thick ganache on the top. Very soft, very rich, very Moorish. This is a great cake. Very easy to make with your children if you want to get the kids into the kitchen, which is always a good thing. Um, go on to make this please, this is lovely. I hope you enjoyed the recipe and you go on to make it.